I've got to tell you about Vancouver. Vancouver is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. So what do you do? I mean, how do you decide where to go? Like a bird on a tree. What did we do, honey? Well, I think you had the brilliant idea of going on a bike tour. And we ended up signing up for a night bike tour, which was fantastic. So we rode around the city for four hours just before sunset, after sunset. Um, it was great. Uh, we saw so much. We started in the middle of the city, rode, rode down to the harbour then along to the harbour and into Stanley Park. We got the history of the city, history of logging in Canada. Uh, it was fantastic. What did you think? Oh, I loved it. And if you're going to start a holiday in Vancouver, there's no better way to, to do it than a bike tour. As Kathleen said, it lasts for four hours and you go right around the city. It's it's absolutely Beautiful sensational. I should imagine it'd be good. Let me run some video and I'll show you what you can expect to see and I'll explain a little bit about Vancouver. first founded by a guy called George Vancouver in 1792. It's on the west coast and it's the gateway to the glaciers of Alaska. The start to the slopes of Whistler and the most scenic drive in the world, the Icefield Parkways. Gonna do all these adventures, it's best to start with a wonderful experience, and this is it. The first stop is Canada Place, and this is where all the cruise ships dock before starting their adventure to Alaska, and it's where the tour guide gets the opportunity to tell you a little bit about the wildlife, the bears. Grouse Mountain and what you can expect to see on the rest of the tour. From the very bottom to the very top in one steep incline. It takes the average person about an hour and a half to get up. Um, my personal best is 48 minutes. Um, but the world record is 23 minutes. It's all the same. And the idea of climbing up that mountain in 23 minutes is really good. More black, more cuddly. Grizzly bears are bigger, more brown, more aggressive. So if you see a black bear, uh, you can make eye contact, you get big, and you slowly back away. You don't turn and run, because like a big dog, it will trigger their instincts to chase you. Um, and if they attack you with black bears, you actually fight back, making for their snout and their eyes. And you see a grizzly bear, on the other hand, you get big, you avoid eye contact, and you stay still. If you see it start to look you in the eyes, flick its jaw, I mean, it was really good because the guy, he takes you, you, when you visit a city, you need to know these things. You need to know about the history, how it was formed, and, and he explained about the gold mining and the logging, um, how there was a big rush, a surge of people to basically strip the country dry <laughs> and ship it all off to somewhere else uh, as the country's been explored. Um, yeah, so he took, us to St he took us to Stanley Park, that was great, he explained all that. Then we went on to the beach, um, and he got us there at just about six o'clock as the sun was setting. So it was an ideal time to take photos, I mean, you know, a photographer's dream. The sun setting on the harbour, the boats are just drifting across the horizon. Oh, bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got
as we're flying around oh. and welcome to Stanley Park. So in the 1800s, all of Stanley Park was logged. But the loggers left behind some of the biggest, oldest trees, literally only a couple. This guy over here and this guy over here are two of them. Any guesses why they didn't chop it down? Let's start with this one. Why would they not have chopped it down? It's so beautiful. The origin story of the trees, there was a man in their society that was incredibly generous. He was willing to just give away all his possessions. When the man died, the creator said, in this man's place, a western red cedar will grow and carry off floor, making them the largest organism we know about on this planet. But what they do is allow trees to communicate with each other. So let's say this guy goes for lays a little sapling, and it's in dappled shade, and it thinks it doesn't have a very good chance of growing up. The Douglas fir will send it nutrients, carbon, through the fungal network to support it in growing. But if that tree is too covered in shade and thinks it has very, very little chance of growing up, it will actually cut off nutrients to that tree and prioritize its other systems. Then, what did we do after that? Uh, from there, we rode along the inner harbour and we went to the, the laughing Chinese laughing statues. I think by um, the owner of Little Lemon, they've been donated to the city. Um, another great photo opportunity. Um, there's some really classic uh, statues there and beautiful lighting. It's great. And then we drove, then we rode along the um, the, the rest of the harbour and he told us all about the Olympic um, village because uh, Vancouver held the Olympics, uh, the Winter Olympics a few years ago and he talked about how they'd set up the village and uh, how they'd tried to sell the, the rental apartments afterwards and all the, all the interesting uh, snippets that only a local would have. And um, yeah, we got to see Vancouver by night and, and hear all the history. Yeah, it was sensational. So we haven't won the Stanley Cup in over 30 years. In 2011, we came super close. We were coming up against Boston, made it to the final game. We really thought we were going to win. So the city erected these big screen television screens all around the stadium, and thousands of people poured down with beer to watch the game. When we lost, people were super drunk and super pissed off. They started flipping over cars, lighting them on fire, breaking into the This is, a, I mean, really is a must-do because then you know what to do in Vancouver because there's so much to see, it's so beautiful. And he goes through it all. So the next couple of days you have an understanding of what's going on. Um, and the other thing which really stood out to us in the first day with him and with everybody else, the Canadians are lovely people. I mean, they're very welcoming and they... Or they greet you and then they, the when they say goodbye, they, they're pleased, uh, pleased that you come to see their country. I mean, it really stands out. It was just great. And it's a must do. You have to do this, whether you take the four hour one, the two hour one, middle of the day, end of the day, get on a bike, ride through the, um, ride through the city. It's just great. That's it? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's all I've got to say about it. That's all I have to say about that.